What is going on guys, recently I was asked um, sort of a suggestion for a video to show off how I do the grime on my cupboards. So the grime on my cupboards, let's go to that, the grime on my cupboards is um, actually uh, decals. So if I actually click on the decal, I can move that grime off. This just saves me a little bit of time so that way I don't have to manually do the grime myself on the cupboards. They, this can be problematic if I move this light to the left too much, you can see it's going to go on other objects. But if you just place it fine, it shouldn't be too much of a hassle. The same texture is used up here for the walls and it's used down here. Now they're not necessarily the best placed um, decals but you're not going to go that close to them anyway so it shouldn't matter. So um, yeah, so I'm going to show you how to do set up this basic material. So if we um, go to Google and you could type in grime texture but I'm going to link this one in the description because this is the one I use so if you want exactly how mine sort of showed up um, you just go to my description and get this one so save it to your desktop and put it in to your level so I'm going to drag that in so make a material and call it whatever you want grime test and bring it over here and dragging your base. Right, so now let's start making the material we're going to use. So, the first thing you need to do is you're going to click on your material here. You're going to go to, I believe, material domain and go to deferred decal. And this will allow you to use it as a decal. Click that, it will automatically be set to translucent. Now, what you've got to do is you've got to come up here, get a multiply, and get hold free, left click, and get your. Um, your free constant or free vector should I say connect that up connect I'm gonna do the red value up because we want it to be black and white anyway because then we're just gonna color it using the mop using the um, free vector change the whatever color you want and we can even change it to a blood it doesn't matter you can change that later anyway so right click that convert it and call it color and that means in our parameter we'll be able to change it dynamically whenever we want hold L and create it up or hold down left click to grill up grab the alpha channel connect to the alpha get to one values whoop, one vectors get both of them up and we want this one to stay as zero because we want it to be transparent we want this one to stay as um, whatever you want actually so this will determine if we go to preview this and we start turning this up this will determine how much to do it will um, sort of show and you can actually go over the top if you want because like, it will make it come out more but it's going to obviously start glowing. So what I usually do for this is I get a clamp. And this will just make sure it doesn't actually exceed the value 1. So if we preview this, it's going to go like that. If we start turning that down, you will see it's going to come up less and less. So we'll set that to, I don't know, 1 for now. And we'll um, convert that to a parameter 2. And we'll say, call it density. It's going to be how dense the um, dirt's going to be or just how thick it will be uh, and then the last thing we need to do is our roughness so to sort this out you need to um, have an add node um, have a one vector connect that up to there connect our red channel to the B and connect that to your roughness then we're going to convert that I'm going to call it shine so what this will allow us to do if we come into here, so if the more we turn this value up, the more it's gonna, um, the more rough it's gonna be. And if we turn it down, well, that might be too much. But if we start turning it down, it's gonna make it shinier. So I'm gonna just keep that as like a 0 0.6 maybe. Not 0 0.6, it's um, 0.6, my apologies. Um, and we just click apply. Now this should sort of be the basis of your actual um, your texture. So if we just minimize that, and we let's just delete that for now. It doesn't really matter. Well, not that one. That one. All right. So now it just is a shiny piece of wood. So now get your decal, drag it onto there, and it always comes out shaped weird. There's probably a way to fix this, but I usually just scale it myself. So I think. Which way is that coming from? That's coming from there. So if we rotate that around, scale it down, over here, scale it down. 
you can then sort of just scale it to the size you want it to be. And you got to remember it's got to like project onto it so it has to sort of go into it. If it goes too far, so we're just going to stretch like that. So you can sort of put it in like that. And this is just sort of a small trick to how one of the ways you can do it. It's not necessarily the best way, but this is just the way I prefer to do it. So that is maybe a bit too strong. It doesn't look too bad, but if you do want to change that, right click on your material that we made. And because we turned our constants into parameters, we can say um, create an instance. We can then replace that with that one. Crime test instance, like there. Double click on that one. And if I um, bring that over to here and we scale it we scale it down so we can see what's happening in the scene. I can then change the color. So if we want it to have a very faint color. Whoop. We sort of turn it like maybe there-ish. And you can turn up down the density so it makes it really thick. It starts to become a bit um, pixelated when it's too much like that, but it's usually fine because we won't exceed that much. Uh, we can always have it at like a 1.2 and you can turn up and down the shine. So if we look at it from an angle, you can see that's not shiny at all. And if we turn that down, it starts to get shinier. So it can also be used sort of as a, a damp effect, which I've never actually used it for. I might use that in the future. But yeah, and that's sort of how you set up some basic um, dirt or grime decals and just, just how I did it. As I've said before, this isn't always the best way to do it. But it's just how I prefer to do it most of the time. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped. I hope the person who commented on my video asking for this really appreciates the video. I hope you I hope this is what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And bye-bye.